Hello, my name is Frederico Lessa. I'm a dentist. I work and live in the city of Ponta Grossa, Brazil. I will present a lecture about bone augmentation and soft tissue grafting, showing a clinical case of guided bone regeneration, connective tissue graft, and a different way to harvest a graft from the palate. So let's start. This is the initial picture, a frontal view. We are going to do two implants, one on the right first premolar and one on the left lateral incisor. In occlusal view, you can see the lack of buccal volume. We started doing a digital planning. We can see here the problems we have to fix during the procedures, during the treatment. We can see here different views of the STL images. On the first premolar, we have lack of buccal soft tissue volume and absence of mesial papilla. On the lateral incisor, we have bone and soft tissue deficiency. This is the CBCT for one implant at the first premolar, we have a good bone volume but for the second implant on the lateral incisor, we have a very thin bone at the medial part of the ridge. So we have a question, what must we do? Bone augmentation or soft tissue grafting? We have some good and recent reviews and articles about, about these topics. I will show their conclusions. When we have implant day sense defects, a guided bone regeneration with a collagen membrane plus a xenogenic particulated grafting material is the most documented and the best op option of treatment. A buccal bone thickness greater than 1.5 mm prevents physiologic and pathologic bone loss and about soft tissue grafting. The indications of immediate or delayed subepithelial connective tissue grafting are prevention of mucosal recession, compensation of volume deficiencies and aesthetic purposes. The connective tissue graft improves aesthetics, color, volume and digital margin position even when GBR is performed. And the use of autogenous grafts for gain of mucosal thickness results in less marginal bone loss. This is the surgical guide I use it to fix the implants. We have two tubes and a window here designed to harvest a graft from the palate. Let's start with the first surgery, implant plus subepithelial connective tissue graft. Surgical guiding position, a circular incision inside the tub, a circular incision again, detachment of the flap, drilling, implant placement, and the implant fixed. Here it's the window we use it to harvest the graft. This surgical guide have, has a window here with a size based on the required graft dimensions. We have here a ramp to direct the blade with an inclination based on the required thickness of the connective tissue graft. And here we have a step to mark, to mark the area with small thickness at the beginning of the ramp that must be discarded. So the graft will have this size. Let's see the incision sequence. First a horizontal incision, then two vertical incisions, another horizontal incision at the step, and Finally, the incision with the blade lying on the ramp, another view of this incision. 
Let's see in the mouth now. First I did a deep delialization of the area with diamond burr and then the guided horizontal and vertical incisions with the blade directed by the walls of the window. After this, an uh, incision with the blade directed by the ramp and the connective tissue graft being collected. I removed the area with small, small thickness at the beginning of the ramp and the connective tissue graft removed. Here I'm placing the connective tissue inside the detached flap, pulling it with the sutures. Abutment fixed, provisional crown finished with a concave contour at, at the cervical area, and immediate post-op, another view, look the donor area and the volume we gained here. Seven days post-op, let's see the second surgery, implant plus guided bone regeneration. This is the flap design. I did the incisions, preserving the papillae, a full thickness flap, superficial split thickness flap, the deepithelialization of the papilla, and the flap coronally advanced. Let's start. First, a circular incision inside the tub. The incision preserving the papillae. Detachment of the tissue. Surgical guide now in position. Drilling. Implant placement. The implant fixed. Look how thin this area is. The ideal implant position 3 mm above the cervical margin of the future crown. Here the decortication of the bone surface, the ridge surface prepared to receive a graft. A screw used to fix the membrane and here collecting autogenous bone from the tuberosity. Here we have autogenous bone chips and here autogenous bone plus BIOS. I used BIOS small. I used a collagen membrane bioguide. Here the membrane is shaped with two holes, one for the screw and one for the abutment. The membrane fixed epically on the screw, placing autogenous bone on the thinnest surface and filling all the space with autogenous bone plus BIOS. Fixing now the membrane on the abutment, the membrane in place covering the bone graft, the flap released without any tension to cover all the area. Here I'm doing the papillae depithelialization with diamond burn. Look the aspect of them. I used a very small suture, 7 mm needle, uh, polyamide suture. Starting the sutures, the erupted sutures finished and the provisional crown immediate post-op. Another view, and here seven days after the surgery. After the healing period, I did some procedures on both central incisors, a composite resin and recontour, and a replacement of a deficient crown. The transfers here placed, and the impression being made, the both impressions, two implants and one tooth. Look 
this is the soft tissue profile before the cementation. Look here and here the volume we have. The cementation of the three crowns, two implants and one tooth. And this is the final outcome. After 15 months, look, this is the first premolar where we did a, a connective tissue graft. Look now the papilla, the mesial papilla. Another view after 15 months, an occlusal view, an occlusal view of the lateral incisor. Another picture. And here two pictures before and after 15 months. Look, we did two different procedures, uh, subepithelial connective tissue graft at this area and guided bone regeneration at this area. And both were successful. So that's it. I hope you had enjoyed the lecture. Uh, thank you and see you next time.